the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Scott Frost, not a good year last year. Now he has come back on a uh, shorter contract, a a contract that pays him less money. So that definitely doesn't make you feel good about the prospects for this season. However, when you look at this team and what they were last year, only three wins, and yet their postgame win expectancy was seven and a half wins. Like, this team should have been a lot better than they were record-wise. You look at this number that they've got here, number 100 in returning production, and with some teams, that really scared me. And with them, it doesn't really because you've got a lot of transfers coming in. Just a ton of guys. You've got a new offensive coordinator. Um, and the defense was pretty good last year. It was, you know, it was okay. Uh, I I expect some new things this year. I will say that. Uh, let's uh, let's look at the projected SP plus record, eight and four. Mm, okay, like let's let's see. Uh, let's talk about the offense first. Number thirty five in PPA per drive. They were number seventy five in rushing success rate. Number twenty six in passing success rate, and number 36 in offensive explosive rate. The numbers here would lead you to believe that this was a much better team than just three wins. It just it still blows my mind watching this team last year. The new OC is Mark Whipple. Uh, of course, came over from Pitt. He replaces Matt Lubick. Again, the offense was okay. It was just bad decisions in some key, key spots that, uh, that really got them beat in some of these games. They swapped out the quarterback, Martinez, for Texas's Casey Thompson. Uh, along with that, you brought in three wide receiver transfers. You now got five wide receivers that uh, had 342-plus snaps last year. The offensive line appears to be uh, pretty strong. They were number 31 in havoc rate allowed last year, so pretty good offensive line. Passing offense was number 26 in explosiveness last year, but they only had 57 plays of 20-plus yards. That's number 86 in the country. Hey, if you were that good at it, why did you not do it more often? That's That's my... That's my question. Uh, can Whipple's play calling, you know, help them do more of what they're good at this year? That's that's what I'm curious about. So, Mark Whipple, it took him a little while to get things going at Pitt, but once he did, man, they just took off. I'm curious how his offensive philosophy can work successfully with the defense for uh, Eric Chenander. I hope I said that right. If I didn't, you can roast me in the comments. It's okay. Uh, talking about the defense. Number 64 PPA per drive, number 80 rushing success rate allowed, number 88 passing success rate allowed, but they were number eight in explosive play rate allowed. So, uh, you know, what are you going to do? I'm I'm a little surprised that this defense was, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? The numbers didn't look good, but when you watched them, I felt like they were a lot better than the numbers showed. Uh, The defense does replace a lot on the defensive line and in the secondary. Linebackers have a ton of experience coming back. Defensive line transfers, Mathis from TCU. You got Wynn coming in from Alabama, Drew from Texas Tech. Like, you got legit guys playing defensive line. I think they're going to be pretty good at that position. Uh, Along with that, uh, I've got uh, six defensive transfers coming in that should be, um, you know, they should play early and they should play often, I would imagine. Uh, You got, you know, including transfers, there are nine guys with 455-plus snaps, so they should be plenty experienced this year. Uh, they are projected favorites in 10 games this year. Now, their win total is 7.5, and, and it's just the same, minus 115 to the over, minus 115 to the under. Um, let's talk about this. Let's talk, They are plus 275 to actually win the division, which is kind of insane considering they only won three ball games last year. But sometimes wins and losses are not everything, right? It, especially when you're going into another season, you're trying to look and see exactly where they got better, et cetera. Uh, Their field position, which is directly related to special teams, was awful last year. Number 91 in offensive uh, field position, number 97 in defensive field position. Over Frost's tenure, Nebraska should have won about 23 games based on the final stats, right? Post-game win expectancy. They've only won 15. Like, that's not luck at, at a certain point. It's coaching. Can Frost get out of whatever funk he's in and make the right decisions? Uh, Special teams were a complete disaster. They've moved Bill Bush to a full-time special teams coordinator because they did not have one. Uh, Frost says he's going to start using more starters on special teams. Okay. Uh, It's it's one of those where you really need to show me. Um, But I'm kind of bought in on them this year. 
Like, I like Casey Thompson. I like what he did with the offense in Texas. I think that Frost being willing to take a pay cut, being willing to change over some of his staff, et cetera, he wants this thing to work. And and I think they will this year. I've got him at eight and four. Would seven and five surprise me? No. Would six and six surprise me? I mean, nothing with this team would really surprise me at this point. Uh, they're projected favorites in 10 games, but they got six games that are toss ups. Uh, toss ups for me are games that are projected to be within one score, so eight points or less. I, you know, uh, the schedule looks reasonable. They get Oklahoma at home in week four. Um, yeah, I, I think that there's a chance that they could do really good things this year. So I've got them eight and four. I could go and see. I could see them doing anything from five wins to ten wins. It nothing at this point would surprise me with this bunch. Uh, what would surprise me, I think, is them winning the division, like plus two seventy five. Uh, I think the second favorite odds behind Wisconsin. Whew, okay, okay, you got to show me on that one. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.